Hi, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you a really helpful tool and template for executive functioning skills. So executive functioning skills, there's a lot of research that's been done on them. There's lots of articles you can find. But basically, in summation, executive functioning skills are the skills that help you get what you need to get done during the day. So helps you get organized, helps you get on task, and helps you manage all of the resources and things that you have to do. Um, so they're really important skills, but a helpful thing to know is that they're not innate. They're not intuitive. They're not something that you're bored with. They're something that have to be taught and practiced and built over time. And usually executive functioning skills and the parts of the brain that are used in facilitating those are not fully developed until you're in your mid to late 20s. So just know that this is something that's really important for our students in the classroom and something that we need to scaffold and support. So it ranges from anything from organization to goal-directed behavior to managing your resources to staying on task and understanding how to move on or change tasks as well. And there's really three different types of executive functioning. There's inhibitory control, which helps you get focused, start on a task, finish a task, and get motivated. There's working memory, which is how you remember all the things you need to do and manage your resources and pick out the key details that you know you need. And then the last one is flexible thinking. And that's what helps you use your resources change your thought patterns and shift from one task to another or one pattern of thinking to another. So that should be enough information there just to get you started. But there's a really helpful kind of way of supporting executive functioning skills. Um, and I've linked several resources in the description for this video about it. A lot of research that's out there and it's called Get Ready, Do and Done. And this was developed by a speech language pathologist. And it's a way, it's basically a protocol or a way of supporting executive functioning skills for students so that they know what they have to get ready. So that's kind of, you know, focusing on that aspect of executive functioning skills. Um, you give them what they need to do, which is the tasks they have to do, and then done. And done tells them what they have to do. What, what criteria essentially they have to meet to be completely finished with a task. So it helps them manage their resources, goal-directed behavior, and then flexible thinking, knowing what they have to do at the end. So there's a whole lot of templates that are out there. There's even some on Teachers Pay Teachers, but here's a free one that you can use. And I have a tech tool that supports it as well. So shout out to my friend, Ms. Corey Williams for this. She's the one who showed me this extension that I'm going to show you in this. But this is a template that you can make a copy of. So I just built this in Google Slides. And the idea here is that in this get ready column, you list the materials the students are going to need to accomplish the tasks that you've set up for them that day. These are the things they have to do in the middle. And this color scheme is the same that's used across a lot of these get ready, do, done templates. And then the last one here is the basically what, how do you know that you're done? What does this look like? What's the proof that the task is completed? All right, so these are the things that they have to get done and they know it's done when you accomplish this. So that's the first slide here, it's just an example. If you notice, I listed the items here, but I also added clip art. Um, it's really helpful from a universal design for learning perspective if you add visuals, because that's another way of conveying and communicating the information, multiple means of representation, giving it an icon. So maybe students who are still learning those words or the icons are what speak to them a little bit better, they have that option there built in. Um, the other thing that I'll say is that whenever you're using this type of resource as well, the second slide I have linked here has more of the teacher instructions as well. Um, so ultimately the way they get get ready, do, done template works is you don't actually start off moving left to right. Your brain kind of goes back and forth. So over here in the done category, I've included some question prompts for you to think about. So think about what does done look like? Add a visual or an image, maybe use the teacher, add a picture there. You take a picture of the finished assignment or the finished task that the students need to have done so they can visualize it, they know what it looks like, and that's something that they're working towards. They know the criteria. Um, so for something that's really simple, maybe it's having their desk organized in your classroom, or it's having their agenda filled out for your class so they know what homework assignments they're gonna be doing at home. And you add a picture here so they know this is how mine should look, or this is what my teacher is looking for, and that's how I know that I'm done. If you're thinking more of a content area thing, perhaps it's turning it in online. So you have the confirmation message or a little tutorial here that shows this is how you turn it in online. Um, so you can add the sketch or image or picture or even tutorial video or the student can. Maybe part of this first time you do this with students, they brainstorm what that might look like and you do this together. And then when you move from done, you go over here, all right, so what steps do I have to, to reach or complete to get to that done phase? 
So this is where you chunk the tasks again. So it's a little bit easier for students to manage that. And they basically have a little checklist here of things that they need to get done. And then over here on the far left is the resources they need to do this task to get that done. All right, so this is where you list the resources, things that students need to have ready, and so on and so forth. And I've linked, again, some resources here for you to get the little icons and images that I used. So you as the teacher and the students are going to work from done all the way to get ready. And then when you have those things item listed out and ready to go, that's when you really focus on the get ready, do, and done. So a little bit of a tech support here is maybe you have this up on the screen for your students when they walk in or when you get to this point in the lesson where they have to be doing this. It's always make sure that you teach this to students. Um, they, they're going to need to be guided through this the first few times you use this because, again, executive functioning skills are not something you're born with or something that's taught. Whenever you use a new template or a way of doing things, have to model it, have to show students examples. But there's a technology tool that you can use to even facilitate this further. So it's called the Thinking Time Tracker. This is an extension in Google Chrome. I have it linked here on my template. And the way that this works is it uses the same color scheme as the get ready, do, and done. So the yellow, the green, and the red. And what it allows you to do is set up time blocks here so you know how much time you're going to be spending in each one, and then it gives you notification that that time has passed. So perhaps as the teacher, the first time that you do this, you determine how much time is at each one, and the students can figure it on their devices. This is like their own personal little timekeeper here. Um, but maybe as you move through this, you have you give students a little bit more autonomy and you provide maybe a suggested chunk of time. So maybe five to eight minutes to get ready uh, and then 15 to 20 for the do and then five to 10 for the done. So students have that. You don't necessarily tell them you have to get it done in exactly five minutes, but you give them a window of time and they work through that. If they get it done a little bit faster, that's fine. They need a little bit more time. They kind of have that flexibility built in. So to use this tool, you're just going to have to add it. Depending on your Google settings, your district might limit the freedom that you have to add these. Um, in, for my district, teachers can add extensions pretty easily, but it's our students that can't. So if you're wondering, um, you might have to get this whitelisted or approved in your district. And to do that, you'll enter a ticket with your technology system. Uh, and you'll copy this link here and just tell them that Thinking Time Tracker is what you want to use. Is always, they're probably going to review the privacy settings on that, make sure it's okay, but it should be. When you add an extension, it's under this little puzzle piece on your profile. And if you want it to show up more often, you're going to click the pen button. So when I've pinned it, there it is. So the first time I use this, it's probably going to go through a little bit of setup questions. All right. So this is where you can adjust how much time you want to spend on things. Um, so again, this is a little bit of a test here for our students who are used to reading digital clocks. This is more of an analog clock. Um, but you can set up these time markers. And whenever you're finished, um, you can look at them there. Um, I'll also say that if you want to look at your time markers in a different way, you have these options here as well. And you can add a description here. So this is where I can list out even more of those things. So Chromebook, math folder, Pencil, calculator, helps if I spell it right, calculator. Um, I will say this one is slightly different in that it uses a get done. Um, that's another iteration of this. So we're just going to put that as the done category. In practice problems, line, cross off choice number. All right, so we're going to do set the clock. And if I want to give myself a little bit more time, if I adjust that, it does adjust it here. All right, and whenever I'm finished, I'm just going to click start. All right, so as I set that, it's going to keep working. It's going to keep going even if I hide it. Um, that basically turns it off there. If I need to stop this at any point in time, I can, but that just gives me a little bit of a reminder there on the time that I have visible, all right? If you want even more options, um, you can go to the website and it gives you a little bit more information on how to use this, but it's a pretty fantastic tool for your students. And again, it just gives them an option to manage their time is always make sure that you model it for them. But but whenever it gets done with that, if you could hear the beep, um, it gives you a little beep there that tells you that a particular chunk of time for your task has already passed. 
um, or you're getting close to that amount of time passing. All right, so helpful option there, something cool to utilize for your students. So if you have questions, let us know, and I hope this has been a helpful resource for you as you work to support executive functioning skills. Thank you.